let's continue the analysis of the frequency event and let's see how the rotational speed, the rotational inertia of the generator is playing uh, a quite important role into the dynamic. So we have our system here. Let's just take back the initial step to 1% here. So we are uh, taking back the load increase to one megawatt. We initialize, we reperform our simulation for 10 seconds. The frequency decline is lower, of course. We get our new uh, steady state of, uh, not steady state, and new final uh, frequency value at the end. It's not a steady state because it's not stabilizing at any point in time. So it keeps on decreasing. So let's see now uh, what's the role of the uh, inertia in the system. So where do we find uh, the inertia? The inertia is a property of the type of generator. So we need to open the generator element page, and then we need to go into the type of the machine, specifically under the RMS uh, tab, where we see the acceleration time constants, which is the normalized value of the rotational inertia. Right now it's 10 seconds, as we did in the calculation. So let's just take this value down to one second, so one tenth of the initial uh, inertia. So we reperform our uh, dynamic simulation, and as one would expect, the frequency keep on declining much faster. 10 times faster than uh, before. So now we reach a frequency value after 10 seconds, which is 49.164. Does make sense that it's 10 times more? Because in the end, uh, we have this part of the equation, okay, where we have the ratio between the power step and the inertia. The inertia is one tenth, so the decline, the rate of change of frequency will be 10 times larger. Okay, so that's the first point. Now let's see also what is happening if we have the governor back into the system. So right now this situation of course is a bit uh, not really bringing to any uh, feasible solution. So let's see anyway why this inertia is still very critical even if we have a governor into the system. You see that uh, there is always the possibility, as I said before, to access all the information from the data manager, but there is also this nice button here, which allows um, a quick access to the different elements and dynamic model. The GOF, of course, will include all the governors that are uh, included in our system. Right now, we just have one governor, so that's pretty much it. So let's take the governor back into the system. So in service, let's reperform our dynamic simulation. We see now that situation is much more relaxing because we reach a new, uh, again, we reach the steady state frequency. You see that we reach again the value that we were reaching also in the previous case in, when we were reaching the steady point, a steady state value. So that's 49.996 hertz. But you will see that uh, the nadir in this case got down to 49.985. So let's uh, just take back the inertia back to the 10 seconds that we had at the beginning. And let's see if anything is going to change in our dynamic simulation. Hopefully, yes. And what is quite important to notice is that the role of the inertia, as you can see, this curve, the frequency, will be going down much slower compared to before. This makes perfectly sense because the inertia is uh, helping or is limiting the change of the frequency into the system. Let's just take the simulation a little bit longer, up to 20 seconds, so that we get again our steady state. You will notice that the steady state frequency is again 49.96. Uh, again, this is perfectly reasonable because 
we have uh, just changed the inertia compared to before, but we haven't changed any kind of group characteristic of our generator. So the generator, as we will see uh, better in the next few classes, will be always responding with the same amount of power increase. So that means that the steady state frequency will be the same regardless of the inertia into the system. Okay, so that was about uh, the inertia. Now let's just analyze one last, but I would say also equally important uh, parameter or aspect into this dynamic that does not relate actually to anything in the generator, but it actually relates to the property of the load into the system. So our load right now is set as a constant power load without any voltage dependency. That means pretty much that uh, the active power and also the reactive power, if there were any, would not change if the voltage in the system uh, is changing. So the load is extremely stiff in that sense. So let's see if there is any difference when we change this characteristic. So where do we find this property? This is a property of the load, but specifically not of the element, but of the type of the load. Also in this case is an information that will be displayed under the RMS uh, tab of the load. So what we do now is that uh, we change the coefficient from being constant power to being coefficient CP equal to one. That means that the load will be constant impedance which means that it will have a quadratic dependency on the voltage. So if the voltage is changing, the active power will be changing according to the square of the voltage. Let's reperform our simulation once more. We see that the load, initial power, 100 megawatt, voltage down here, one per unit. Perform the simulation, voltage here is always one per unit the load increased to 101 megawatt as expected, and we didn't experience any difference in our dynamic. And this is a bit, let's say, disappointing to a certain extent, but this is correct because in the end, we do have um, a very effective voltage control in the system so that the voltage here is maintained to one per unit. So we can't really appreciate any change simply because the voltage is not changing. So even though the characteristic of the load change, we don't have any consequence. However, this can be quite interesting in the case that uh, we don't have this effective voltage control in the system anymore. I would say that uh, it's better if we analyze the system uh, taking out the AVR. So putting the AVR out of the system, out of service. So our generator will not have any external device that will be adjusting the excitation of the machine. So the magnetic field into the into, between rotor and stator in order to adjust the reactive power production. We perform again the simulation and we see that something happened. No, let's say, dramatic changes, but it's quite interesting to notice something. So you will see that uh, since our generator doesn't have the capability of controlling the voltage, the excitation of the machine, so the excitation voltage will not be adjusted throughout the simulation. That has a nice or oh, interesting consequence. The consequence is that uh, since we increased the active power here, we increase the amount of current into the system. That means we increase the reactive power consumption throughout the system. The generator, the electrical generator, of course, needs to supply this extra amount of reactive power. But this reactive power needs to be produced in some way. So it needs to be produced according to the excitation of the machine. Since we uh, prevented the automatic voltage regulator to adjust the excitation, that means that uh, this extra reactive power will be provided by slightly demagnetizing the, by 
discharging, so to speak, the magnetic energy that is stored in the uh, magnetic field in the rotor. So that has the consequence that the voltage will slightly decline throughout the system. By slightly declining the voltages, our load will actually not consume the expected amount of active power. So you see now that uh, the consumed active power will be a little bit uh, less. That is the consequence that actually the frequency, the steady state frequency will increase a bit more. What is even more interesting to notice is what's happening if we also disable the governor. So let's take out of the game also the capability to control the power, the active power output of our conventional unit. Let's perform again our simulation. And we see something interesting. So we see that because of this uh, consequence of discharging the magnetic field into the generator, and that means decreasing the voltage into the system, our load will actually keep on consuming less and less active power. This has the consequence to self-compensate for the imbalance that we have between the mechanical active power, the mechanical power, and the uh, generator active power consumed. So if we keep on running a little bit uh, longer the simulation, let's say 100 seconds, we will experience that actually the slope of the frequency, so the decline, the rate of change of frequency, is decreasing more and more. 100 seconds is not really sufficient. Let's take 200 seconds to make sure that we safely reach a new steady state. 200 seconds, I think that's enough now. And we see that the frequency reached a new steady state, 49.817 Hertz. We can see that the two uh, mechanical power and active power, again, uh, match and we see that uh, why is that is that because of the our decline in the voltage we ended up that our load is consuming again 100 megawatt which was the initial mechanical power produced by the generator so pretty much this area under the curve which is the energy the extra energy that was consumed during this dynamic simulation was the one behind the decline in the frequency into the system, but in the end, this final value of the active power is equal to the initial value of the active power. That means that we can safely reach a new steady state. Just to get uh, the same uh, situation in the previous case, so if we again re enable our AVR, then we get our uh, simulation again, and you see that. Uh, we have the problem, as we were experiencing also in the hands calculation, that uh, the voltage is constant. That means that the active power is constant. And that has the consequence that the frequency keep on declining uh, throughout the whole simulation. So why do we want to point out this aspect? This aspect is to say that uh, it's, of course, very important to have a look at uh, the active power balance because as a consequence of the frequency, but it's uh, also important to keep in mind that uh, uh, of this interconnection that we have between uh, frequency, active power, and voltages into the system, because actually also the voltage is playing an important role in uh, uh, understanding how elements, in this case loads, are behaving in the, in the system, and they could have consequences in terms of frequency and voltage. And that's pretty much the last part of this example.